Hello Americans and other friends and subscribers around the world. So we're back again. Um, today we're actually going to do a little, uh, that lots of people ask me of, you know, about bug out and, uh, um, I was getting bushcraft, bushcraft or woodcraft, uh, packs and what I carry in the hills and all that kind of stuff. And the one thing is we're lucky enough to, um, basically we live a woodcraft or bushcraft craft life all the time. You know, the homestead is basically like a, uh, base camp. So, you know, we live it every day, but, um, there is things that we have. I do have, you know, like a bug out back, you know, our pack full of stuff or my pack, you know, um, which has got depending on what we're doing you know and i've showed that in mushroom hunting videos and stuff like that the stuff we carry with us um so one of these times i'll go through you know my pack i was i call it the bug out pack because that's what everybody <laughs> calls them now but, you know but just basically a day pack um or survival pack would be more what it is mm -hmm. um but i was going to go through some of the tools and like i said um you know being lucky enough to live you know at the base of the mountain and you know out in pretty much the middle of nowhere the thing is is the main tools and the main stuff that we have other than what I carry on my person all the time is we have it in all the vehicles you know every vehicle we have um, the camper when we have camper when we're camping out of campers so and we have multiples so but I'll go over the main ones that I always have right at hand if not on me then it's in the vehicle or in my pack so i'm gonna go across or go go over are you laughing at me back there i'm um, not just you but kai he's no. he's wanting to play over some of them go get your ball man go get it so we'll go start doing that so first i'll go over what i carry on my person at all times no matter man in the flatlands or in the mountains of course is the <clears throat> you know is a hillbilly hacker you know which i use for everything so I carry that on me all the time. I still carry the trusty old flip out um, pocket clip one. This one I use and abuse. This is the one instead of beating up my, um, you know, the raven beaks for prying and doing different stuff. Um, I use the old buck. You know, man, they're great old knives. Made in, actually made in Idaho too. Made in northern Idaho, man. You can get one of these for about 25 bucks. So I carry that all the time. What's all got on me? Usually I carry a smaller pole saw in this pocket, but then once you have grandkids and you let them play with it, it is set, sitting somewhere down there in those cottonwoods because he was using it yesterday, so I got to find that. But usually I carry a pole saw, you know, one of those fold-out pole saws like this, but the small, you know, a small pocket size version of it usually is in my pocket. Something that I always carry being a twigger, <laughs> which is better than a tweaker, but uh, is a pair of nippers. And then I always in the vehicle have a pair of loppers too, so that if I'm up there and I'm wanting to get some dogwood for a project or something like that, then I always have that too. Always have a pair of gloves on me. Um, and you always, no matter what, you always have a gun. <laughs> and whether it be a little 22 short revolver or a shotgun or the 44 or whatever, man, I always, always have some kind of firearm on me. Okay, so that's pretty much what I carry. Kitty laughs at me when I'm unloading my, she's like, how the heck do you carry all that crap around? <laughs> and, and no, he does not go through any metal detectors. <laughs> that's right, exactly. I'd have to strip, man. So then something then we carry maybe not on my person actually this I usually carry on my person all the time especially since the bear incident but this one is actually uh, I'm in the process of making another sheath for it and I'm actually gonna have to sacrifice this because just because for <laughs> for a customer so I'm going to end up sacrificing the Green River so I'm going to have to customize another one for myself so you always have, man, I always have a good sized knife, whether it be a fishing or hunting, man, make sure it's long enough to go through the fat on a bear. Always a good idea. Um, something, this one, this is actually a uh, little east wing. What are you doing? Well, the, the sun has just came through the trees glaring. and is glaring right on the stump and I can't see. The stuff? 
Yeah. And then I'll show it back here. Okay. So this one here is actually my old East Wing, and I picked it up at a, um, a barn sale or a flea market or something quite some time ago, and ended up cleaning it up and uh, everything and conditioning the handle, and Miss Kitty fell in love with it, so I actually gave this one to Miss Kitty. So you always want to have a hatchet, whether it be a, you know, I got this one, and then I've got, and I actually have some old, uh, old school wood hat or wood handle hatchets, and I carry one of those myself. Um, but you, I have some of those on the Idaho Hill on uh, eBay right now. But I also carry another one, and then this one, which this is an updated, you know, the Fiskers, and the um, I would have never bought myself one of these you know because i'm an old school guy you know i like the old leather handles you know i love the you know the 30s and 40s era is my favorite so i really am into the old tools and everything from that era but my brother zach gave me this the last time he was up here man and i love it man and we carry this one in the green bean i just took it out of the green bean for this this is always underneath my seat so that we always have it man it's got the handy little carrying case and everything man just love this old fiskers and it's done real well. And like I said, uh, Norland is a, I got a little Norland hatchet, wood handled hatchet that I just absolutely love that I keep for myself. And I picked it up for oh, five or 10 bucks at a flea market and redid the handles and everything. I could actually sell that one for probably 50 or 60 bucks, but it's mine. And this is one of my prized possessions. This one goes in my pack. It gets swapped along with like guns and everything from whether we're in the van or we're in the um, green bean or whatever the heck we're in or if we're packing up the mountain, this is always with me. And basically this one is a, uh, is a Vietnam era. This is uh, actually a gift from Uncle Earl to me. It's USMC, man, and what I call it's a woodsman's pal. Woodsman's pal. I used to have a couple of them. The woodsman's pal has the, uh, uh, a handle guard or a finger guard that goes across like this but it looks a lot like this a little shorter and stuff but this thing man i use this everything from wood shakes man to everything that thing this thing is just look at that man amazing quality wood handle i just love this thing and one of these it set you back about 350 bucks so it was a great gift <laughs> i love it and then uh you never ever ever leave home without a fishing pole you know whether it be a little telescopic man a little five footer or a, you know your bigger full full on one i also have a telescopic fly fishing because i love my fly fishing but no matter what we always have at least two telescopic poles with us at all times just man you can always catch you some dinner or just to kick back and do a little fishing along the thing so never leave home without it and I didn't bring it out here I left it sitting in the van over there but something I do is I take the old uh, chewing tobacco cans it's once in a while I don't show too much stuff <laughs> occasionally occasionally I might have a chaw and these old plat or these new plastic ones man these are great to put uh, some fishing lures and some hooks and some sinkers in and maybe even a little uh, um, fake uh, you know grubs or whatever in these but these are great for carrying fishing tackle in and then I showed this I carried the, uh, the short one too but I have three of these my, <clears throat> and for cutting with these old school ones I have my grandpa's that's actually yeah no grandpa's is another one in the van but uh these things man are amazing amazing this one's a pretty old man I've picked these up for I got my grandpa's and then I got two more of them and I think I paid you know two bucks at a yard sale for them two to five bucks and man they outcut the because I have one that's a Fiskers and this outcuts the Fiskers tenfold but for carrying purposes man this is really feel bad not feel good up your up your backside <laughs> <laughs> don't put that in your back pocket yep so there's a little uh going over just a handful of uh tools um like i said i want we're talking about and i want to get going to start doing some uh bushcraft type videos and show some of the stuff i build and make and all that i've got to work do uh some fixing on the um 
kids kind of tore up the bassinet, the twig bassinet that I'd made for TNT and then for Sissy and then for the next baby. So I got a little few repairs to do on it and Miss Kitty's wanting a couple of wingback chairs. So we'll probably show some of that later on too and um, get into some other bushcraft stuff and I'll show my pack and all that. Do you have any backwoods woman stuff? No. <laughs> All right, then. So I guess until next time, uh, if the cricks don't rise, oh, good Lord willing, <laughs> the cricks don't rise. We'll be back again tomorrow.